Hi everyone, Mary Espresso Press Design. Thank you for joining me today. Another magazine rub on. We're going to do and further this exploration to the next level as we both learn at the same time in real time. But thank you for joining me today, September 19th, 2024. Uh, first, I want to go over something that I forgot to say for the spools. And chances are pretty good by Tuesday, I'm going to forget. So, um, I have this box of ornate buttons. And you could really decorate these to the hilt if you would desire. Put a little swatch of pretty ribbon or lace and add a pretty button on there and um, send that in happy mail. And again, if your punches, whatever size your punches are, you can make much larger spools, but I am going to come up with a few more circle punch designs that we can use for various things, embellishments, whatever. And uh, I just wanted to, I forgot to do that in the last video. So today we're going to do another one like this, which is a progression from just from playing around and you'll need your magazine images embossing folders and these are two I'm never disappointed in they always make everything look great a base some glue your 50-50 alcohol water mixture and by the way that is rubbing alcohol in case that wasn't clear to some people yes rubbing alcohol so no need to waste your vodka or your Everclear or whatever if you're into making tinctures and things like that I don't know if that would actually work or not. <clears throat> and by the way, sorry about my voice. <clears throat> I'm still losing it. As soon as the golden rod comes out, if I sleep with the window open, which I did, there goes my throat, there goes my nose, there goes everything. <clears throat> So I have chosen my images, <clears throat> and of course, unless I want to tear apart my photography magazines, which I don't think I'm ready to do quite yet, um, I was looking for more black and white images, like the first Republic, couldn't find any, but this might be an idea, um, something graphic, simple and graphic, if you don't want a word, like I'm going to use. And today I'm going to use this one. So you'll need some glue. Did I say glue? I hope so. And I have my uh, five... What are they? Five and a quarter by four inch bases. Just going to choose another one. And these are recycled from old watercolor sketchbooks. And That'll probably work. Wait. Let me see. 
make it something a little more simple on the back. Okay, that'll work. Looking for my front here. Oh, there's my bases that I showed last time. I just chop up old sketchbooks, recycle that too. Nobody wants, I don't want to relive my beginning watercolor days. I saved what I wanted to, but might as well um, recycle. So I'm just going to cover this base, show you how to put this one in the embossing folder because it's a little different. I'm using Elmer's Purple Glue. This stuff is very gloopy. I don't remember it being this creamy when my daughter used it all the time from grade school. I really don't remember it being like this. But maybe they changed it. At any rate, it does seem to stick better. So I'm kind of going to hold this up to the light here and get this situated where I might want it. And I think that looks pretty good. I chose this one because I kind of like the car, but it's all going to disappear. The only thing that will probably show up is the only thing I'm going to leave undistressed is the Republic. So while that's drying, I will explain some other things that I've explored this week. No new papers. Um, did have the opportunity to speak or trade comments with Print and Pixel Studios. Met a lovely customer on Etsy, Paper Moon Dreamer, who found me through the earth, she said. Very appreciative, and I hope she finds a way to download her order. But if not, I will assist her. To make sure she gets her product on Etsy, which to my knowledge they still haven't changed it, that you can you can download if you're using the app, you have to use a browser. And I know there are a lot of people who use their phones for everything, but I'm not one of them. So, every time that comes up, I forget, I forget the correct answer as to why you're not getting permissions to download your product, at least as far as I know, that's the issue. Okay, so there we go, I'm going to let that dry a minute. And then I'm going to show you um, I also had a chance to try this on book pages and 
they are these this is a pretty good quality book the pages are very thick but I'm happy to say it did work to my surprise and here is one of them which I love that because that came out looking like denim I don't know if you're gonna see the full effect of I don't I don't think there's a single place on here that has the exact same blue so it all got distressed it took longer and I had to um, spray the alcohol on my cloth and rub with my cloth and that reminds me another thing you're going to need a soft cloth here's mine that's getting pretty tattered but it's still soft so <laughs> getting pretty grungy there so um, I did another one and uh, you're not going to see that as much because it's gray and there's not as much contrast. And then I did another one on uh, the book pages. And uh, what I'm going to show you today helps you re probably remove more of the background while at the same time giving you a more distinct pattern on top and this is probably still the one where you can see that the best and I use my favorite embossing folder this one's a little warped and I actually went back and bought another one let's see if I can get that to show up no. let me see if I have something black here there we go. It's a little better. So I'm looking at something like that. I don't have my feathers out here. I'm never disappointed in this one. That always gives me great results every time I use it. And let me see if my feathers are handy. I didn't think of grabbing those because I'm not going to use them. But this particular folder, it only gives me great results on this thick paper because it always tears my paper. So I don't use it that often. But it was great for showing you that example. So, okay, I'm going to get my favorite boho one here. See if this is dry. And then, oh, I wanted to put another little element on there. Uh, see if there's anything. I'm probably going to cover up that white spot. Let me get my tear roller. I'm probably going to cover up that white spot with a little red. And then I might apply that extra little heart. Hopefully that's long enough because I don't want more white. Uh, yeah, that'll work. I'm just going to cover up that little white spot. And I'm probably going to go in a straight line. Put the little heart down there. Just going for something graphic. And then 
We'll put that in the embossing machine. Oh, I forgot you'll need that too. Unless you do it the DIY handmade way and then get your get your distress whatever pattern you find whatever dimensional objects you can find around your house and remember you won't be able to put those on a base and distress it you'll have to distress it and then put it on a base Should have used regular glue for that. It will stick with regular glue and it's not as gloopy. So make sure I get all those edges down. And there's my basic design. I don't think there's anything else I had to say. I wish there was because I could probably use another minute, but let me just wipe this off as good as possible so we don't have any lifting. So I hope you're all doing well. It's one week of Today it's one week since the dogs have been here. It's beginning to settle into a routine. I'm happy to say nobody went to the bathroom in the house since I think day two, which this dog has never been in a house either. So I was really worried about how do you house train an old older dog. But it worked. And today or tomorrow I'm going to start on the leash training. And hopefully that goes quickly. So, you get your embossing folder, and normally there will be something, the, the um, brand name, something on the front. Other ones, it's black in the front to tell you which side is up and which side is down. And this would be your normal way to put it in the embossing folder. But today we're going to flip the image and go the other way so that we get a deboss instead of an emboss. And that is what is going to help us distress more of the background and at the same time make a deep impression for the image pattern, the emboss pattern. So, and I always get this mixed up. I'm over here at the machine. Three plates is normal for an embossing folder. going to hope this does not stick. And this is just a regular embossing holder. It's not, um, it's not 3D, but you can. This is this was still slightly wet, so I got a pretty good impression. 
So there is the emboss. And then I'm hoping to take out everything around the Republic and the uh, and the heart. I think I'm going to leave the heart. Well, we'll see. And probably I'm going to spray my cloth because this being a magazine, it really didn't take as long as the uh, book pages. So where are we? Again, usually by the third by the third go round. the uh, ink comes off easily. I'm going to spray it once just to make things go faster. So I'm going to try to keep my embossed design. The the sunken part, the lowest part, as dark as possible, while just muting that background. So um, I want to keep the word Republic. So I don't want to go over that too much. Hopefully, yeah, it's coming. I'm surprised that red. I'm surprised that red isn't coming off faster than the black. And again, every magazine is different. Some magazines. lift very easily. Oh, here we go. There's the flower. Doily, whatever. Circle. Let's see what comes off that heart because I'm not really sure. And actually it still feels like I'm feeling a coat of glue on top of this, <laughs> even though I shouldn't be. Oh, there we go. Where the red is coming. See that red? I don't know if you can see that. And it seems like I just, instead of that becoming white, it becomes gray. And then everything being wet, it's going to show up a little more when it's not wet. Here we go. I'm going to start spraying my cloth. So you just keep distressing until you're happy with it. Keep remembering that you don't want to completely damage the paper. Because every time you go over it, you are damaging the paper. Not as much as this sanding block or nail file or something like that. Oh, that's cool. That's cool on the denim. Okay, so I really don't want to be able to tell that much that's a guy in the background. 
I don't mind showing up the car, but I really would like to fade that person as much as possible. So in the black and white image, in this one, it was still two people, four legs, but you honestly can't tell it's people at all because it's a black and white photo. This one has a little more contrast and I think that's probably going to do it. So there we go. And I know you're not going to see it in here as much because my lights fade everything out and um, you'll see it a lot more in the photo when I take the photo. I think I can get a little more off that corner right here maybe. Even though I don't need to distress that background because it's already a camouflage. Let's try to bring out that red. And that one's almost disappearing because, as I said, it never turns white, it just turns gray. I use that same magazine on the Fear of God. Okay, now he's. Now that arm is disappearing. I'll never get that leg to disappear. So <clears throat> still going to look blue no matter what. But maybe I can blur the edge, which I am blurring the edge of those pants. So there we go. That might be a little little better and I know it still looks like a guy from here <laughs> but close up you can't tell and it just looks like shapes okay so I, I'm trying to think if I can put something else on top there to camouflage that a little more. Like I did this one with the homemade washi. But I really don't think so. I think, I think it's going to stay like that. Maybe I can get a little more off the top of that car. Make that fade a little bit more. But as I said, I didn't mind the car. I actually like the car. Maybe I could have put some more magazine confetti to blur that pants line a little bit, but overall you cannot tell that's a person in the background. So there we go. There's that. And remember just deboss instead of emboss and you'll bring out an entirely different look as opposed to the first two times we did this. Okay, so there's, there's the other one I did. And here is the book pages. And that got, that looks totally milky white as compared to what color it originally was. So, and that was just a document, Declaration of Independence. And I just chose something with a, a 
some wide spaces in the background so I could demonstrate this. Okay, so, and there is the book page that did work, took longer. So next time, we are going to take this one step further and that might be the last that I can think of. And that is this one. And we're going to combine some techniques there. Let me get my words up there as much as possible. So we're going to try it on some different papers. And this is wrapping paper. So, get your wrapping paper for part four, and you're going to want something with some white in the background. So, that's the only requirement, and um, you don't want good quality wrapping paper, because I tried it on good quality, and it didn't exactly work the way I hoped. And this is just Dollar Tree wrapping paper. So no, no need to get out your good stuff. And we're going to make a little thing like this. And that's just on book page. So that's what we're going to do next time. And then I think that'll probably be it for the magazine rubbing trash to treasure and paper rubbing trash to treasure because I can't think of what else we can do this on at the moment but if I do come up with something else I'll extend it so thanks for your time everyone and I'll see you next time bye